why you get so, extraordinarily ignorant on this issue. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't say that about a lot of issues, but on the Middle East, yeah. you know, people who have no idea what's been going on since 1948 yeah. will look at a 30 second clip. And, and then they'll become and experts and determined. march across the college yeah. campus. They'll take over the building oh based on Lord. TikTok. Right. Shut up, Joe Scarborough. Here's the thing. Number one, it is not just in 30-second clips that these kids have actually learned stuff. They're actually finding out and then going and researching themselves about what has actually happened over the last 75 years. And in fact, they've been le learning but pre before that. When Lord Balfour decided to create the Zionist Project with Theodore Herzl, they're actually learning this. They're learning that it's been facilitated by Rothschilds, has been facilitated by them. They're learning all this stuff. They literally got a crash course in Zionism and how it started since October 7th. And they're realizing that because of the, the UN and because of them signing the paper, you suddenly get the ability to go to another land that's already occupied and kick the people who are occupying it out? Ask these young people how they feel about what, the, about what England did, about a lot of what these European countries did to the indigenous on this land. Do they feel that's wrong? Yes. Are they going to feel the same way about what's going on in Palestine? Uh-huh. TikTok is basically under fire, and it has been under fire via the U.S. House of Representatives earlier this week because they actually voted in favor of banning TikTok if TikTok is not sold to an American company within, I think it's 180 days. And so there has been a lot mm -hmm. of grumblings about what is the true motivations as to why it is going on. Uh, Game, just to get your perspective, why, why do you personally think that there is this huge push to get rid of TikTok or to get it into U.S. hands? Well, I mean, there's a, um, I don't know if I can say the G word, but what Israel's doing Inside. right now, yeah, mm -hmm. what Israel's doing right now, it's like their lies are just so easily debunked, man. It's really pathetic and sad how they try and BS their way through this. And like, I think uh, TikTok's just an, a great tool to um, circumvent all that propaganda. And especially like the younger crowd, if it's affecting like the, teenagers younger adults and they're getting woken up at that that age um because man it took me to my 30s to like really realize the two-party system's a sham and what we do how we torture and kill and our foreign policy and stuff like i just like 30s and like i wish i knew this like at 15 or 18 you know so i think tiktok will definitely change some minds on that point but um maybe even before the ukraine war i mean that's a whole nother bag of lies from corporate media right so there's just so much stuff that can get debunked in quick in real time in quick time so um it's nothing about china or anything like that i think it's just about they can't let us uh, learn the real the real story what's going on so mm -hmm. yeah well said let's go into the one of the authors of the bill, Mike Gallagher. Shout out to Michael Tracy for sharing this. He says, lead sponsor of the TikTok bill, Representative Mike Gallagher, admits the real reason they're rushing TikTok is because becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30 and the US government doesn't control it like other platforms. Let's get into this and let's hear exactly what Gallagher says. The only impacted sites are those associated with foreign adversary apps, such as TikTok.com. It can never be used to penalize individuals. The text explicitly prohibits that. And it cannot, cannot be used to censor speech. It takes no position at all on the content of speech 
only foreign adversary control, foreign adversary control of what is becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30. This is a common sense measure to protect our national security. I urge my colleagues to support this critical bipartisan legislation. The only... What are your initial thoughts after hearing what he said, King? Um, I mean, again, I just, um, it seems like some, I'm not sure what to think. I didn't, I wasn't able to watch that video. I'm a little underprepared, but, um, I mean, uh, again, it's just not about China or anything like that. It's, or who owns it. I think they just, uh, they just can't have that information out, man. So, um, and that guy's a paid actor. I'm sure <laughs> all politicians are right. I'm sure he's reading some kind of script. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't even believe what he's reading, that guy. So, so what are your thoughts? Um, so as far as what he's saying is he's trying to prevent foreign adversaries. My question is, if we're going to talk about foreign adversaries or foreign nationals dictating uh, to us what media we get or what policy is directed that – that we should support because that's really ultimately what his fear mongering is about because we don't want it to be Chinese policy being, you know, pushed in the United States. Ultimately, my question is why in the world aren't we fear mongering about APAC and J street? Because those are foreign elements of foreign nationals. That's right. APAC's got everybody in their pocket, conservatives mm -hmm. and de Democrats. So yeah. I think uh, Ilhan Omar definitely, when she first got hired, she kind of sort of called it out, like APAC has everybody bought off. But then they shut her up real quick. Like I haven't heard her talk about that since like when she first got into office. So yeah, man, APAC's got, that's foreign interference up the wazoo right there. They got... Everybody locked down. You can't speak ill of them at all. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, because my my and one of my biggest issues is it's like no, you can speak ill of them because of what they're actually doing. Um, and so I'm going to share this as well. There's somebody on the House floor that actually challenged. It, it was representative Thomas Massey. Let's take a look at this. So Thomas Massey says the so-called TikTok ban is a Trojan horse. The president will be given the power to ban websites. This is more than just a pick TikTok ban. This is not just apps. The person breaking the new law is deemed to be the U.S. or offshore internet hosting service or app store, not the foreign adversary. So he gives clips of the actual bill. It says foreign advisory control application. This says the term foreign adversary, sorry, adversary control application means a website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application that is operated directly or indirectly, including through a parent company, subsidiary, or affiliated. Uh, and it says trolled applications. It shall be unlawful for any entity to distribute, maintain, or update, or enable the distribution, maintenance, or updating of a foreign adversary controlled application by carrying out within the land or maritime borders of the United States any of the following. Private services to distribute, maintain, or update such foreign adversary controlled application, including any source code of such application by means of a marketplace, including an online mobile application store, through which users within the land or maritime borders of the United States may access, maintain, or update such application. It says providing internet hosting services to enable distribution, maintenance, or update. And so it basically talks about the making it illegal to also operate a VPN. Thomas Massey continues, says, if you think this is a true, this is an atrocious horse and will only apply to TikTok and foreign adversary social media companies, then contemplate why someone thought it was important to get very specific exclusion for their internet-based businesses written into the bill. 
It says exclusion. The term covered company does not include an entity that operates a website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application whose primary purpose is to allow users to post product reviews, business reviews, or travel information and reviews. So, I mean, doesn't Keith Lee review restaurants on TikTok? So, I mean, that's just my question. <clears throat> I mean, if you can do that on TikTok, then I guess that excludes TikTok too. Yeah, I'm not going to stop at TikTok, man. I mean, Twitter and um, Instagram, I mean, at least, I don't know if the younger generations on that as much as TikTok, but um, you can get instant updates. Everybody's debunking news stories, corporate news in real time. So I'm sure uh, they're going to go after that soon. I mean, they already are, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know shadow banning and just how, like, you click on, like, Joe Biden's account and all the replies are just, like, they just look like made-up accounts, man. Just, like, mm -hmm. bots. And, um, I mean, I can't believe, like, the Patriot Act was 23 years ago, 22, 23. And like, how much effed up stuff have they been doing for twenty three years, man? And like, yeah, um, if they're gonna go further with this, like, oh god, like, need to find some more alternative media sources then or something. But that's it's really scary to think about, man. Definitely, absolutely. Let me share this with you guys too. This is the actual bill. So it's HR seven five two one, protecting Americans from foreign adversary. Controlled Applications Act. So this is the actual bill here. Um, and then the actual text of the bill. So it is prohibition of foreign adversary control applications. It shall be unlawful for an entity to distribute, maintain, or update. So basically that's what we just read. says providing internet hosting for an enabled distribution, maintenance, or updating such a foreign adversary control application for users within the land of maritime borders. So it says data information portability to alternate applications. So Civil pen penalties, it says foreign adversary application violations. An entity that violates the subsection A shall be subject to a pay a civil penalty in the amount not to exceed the amount th that results from multiplying $5,000 by the number of users within the land or maritime borders of the United States determined to have accessed, maintained, or updated a foreign adversary control application as a result of such violation. So, this ultimately really is just limiting who you can deem by your powers of perception, who you want to get your news from. So let's say hypothetically, you want to read news out of The Guardian. Well, isn't The Guardian based in the UK, right? If Biden or the next president It'd be, it'd be Trump or whoever else deems the UK as a foreign adversary, that means you can no longer get your news from The Guardian. That means you can no longer get your news from the BBC. That means, it, let's say hypothetically, he considers South Africa to be a foreign adversary. Well, there goes Twitter. Because who is it owned by? That's right. That's right. I, I forgot about that. A South African immigrant. Mm -hmm. How do we know <laughs> that Elon Musk is not owned and operated by the ANC, the African National Congress, or the EFF? Oh, oh no. So it's really about taking your right to free speech and information away. 
That's ultimately what it's about. And this is made abundantly clear by Thomas Massey. So I'm going to share what Thomas Massey also said from the House floor, because ultimately he took them to task. So let me share this. This is from uh, shout out to Leftward Swing for sharing this video. Leftward Swing says, when some of the worst people in the world make good points about banning TikTok, I can't stand Representative Thomas Massey. But he's not wrong. He brings up a very fair argument. Let's listen to what Thomas Massey says. You know, we're sitting here with phones made in China. We're wearing suits made in China. We drove cars here with chips that are made in China. And they're our foreign adversary. And by golly, we're going to do something about it. What are we going to do? We're going to tell Americans they can't put a piece of software on their computer. They can't go to certain websites that the president designates. So I urge my colleagues to oppose this well-intentioned bill because it will have bad consequences and I yield back the balance of my time. We need warrants in the FISA program. You shouldn't be able to, our government shouldn't be able to spy on Americans without a warrant, yet they are. Let's bring that to the floor and vote on it. These are the kind of cures we need, not the bill that's offered here today. The bill that's offered here today, even though I know it's offered genuinely, it could also be named the Facebook Protection and Enhancement Act, because it's not the American people are going to benefit most from this. Yes, it will be Facebook. Their stock is going to go up if this bill should pass the Senate. Now, what are some ways that we could improve this bill? Well, it should at least have a sunset. I mean... That's the only reason we're able to debate whether FISA uh, should have warrants in it, because it sunsets. And what have we observed? FISA has been abused. That's my concern with this TikTok ban. It will be abused. If it's just banning TikTok and ByteDance and, and uh, copies of that, why does it need to be 13 pages long? It doesn't ban it. It forces divestiture of the company. This sounds like when American companies try to do business in third world countries and a dictator says, well, you can do business here. You just got to give me your company and now you can continue to do business. We wouldn't let another country take over Ford Motor Company for selling Ford cars in their in their country. Yet that's what we're wanting to do here. But isn't that against the whole model of letting the free market dictate? what happens how it how it operates yeah we're the uh conservative uh free speech uh warriors on this one um i think we're going to talk about who's voted for and against it right um mm -hmm. later on. Yeah. yeah curious about like, that where are they mm -hmm. yeah right. thomas massey said And again, you know, this this is a cure that is worse mm -hmm. than the disease. Is it bite dance or TikTok? Will they be taken to court? No. I mean, they're the target of this, but how do you elicit or affect a ban on them? By prosecuting Americans. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Come on now. The only way you can ban TikTok and the other companies from being here is to say what this bill says, which is we will bring civil action. The government will bring a civil action suit against you if you so much as host them here. If you have an app store that allows them to be here, you are an American or an American company and you will be the target of this bill. Those are the only people who can be pursued under this bill. And I know it's in, in order to go after TikTok, or so they say. So, that's basically what basically what Thomas Massey was saying. It's kind of funny how, you know, they want to 
stop people from exercising your right of getting information, you know, from different websites. It's just, it's just, it's just wild to me how they really just do not want any of TikTok to have any, uh, they don't want to have them to have any type of patronage here in the United States unless it's owned by an American company. And my question is, is like, why? So you can do the TikTok, what you guys did to Twitter and, the, you know, in the Twitter files? Uh, they wrecked that. <laughs> oh, my God. Twitter's got so much worse, man, the past year or two. Yeah. So, so many thoughts. Like, is there any working class people or like Americans cheering this on, this bill? Like, this doesn't even, like, what? Like, how many Americans are in favor of this? You know, just regular working class people. It just sounds horrible. Like, you got to be crazy to support this bill. Maybe. Actually, in fact, now that you asked that question, um, let me share the poll. Because there is uh, the banning of TikTok has actually fell. So this is like a Pew Research. So the declining share of adults and few teens support U.S. TikTok ban. Actually, let me enlarge this just for so people can see better. So it says a sh the share of U.S. adults who say they would support U.S. government banning TikTok has declined from 50 percent in March to 38 percent now, according to a Pew Research Center survey conducted this fall. And more are opposed to or uncertain about the potential ban today than earlier this year. And so here it is. Support for a U.S. TikTok ban has dropped among adults since March 2023. So it went from 50%, 38%. Uh, not sure, went up slightly, but then the opposed went from 22 to 27%. Okay, gotcha. So more and more people are saying, no, do not ban TikTok, right? Um, and so it's kind of ironic because Joe Biden has a TikTok, Right, you have many people who are in government that have their own TikToks as well, and it's crazy how they will have a TikTok, but it is, but they don't want it to continue. Um, and so I want to share this video as well because there's a video that actually talks about how even the administration tried to influence through TikTok, but they're proving to be deeply unsuccessful, especially now, because ultimately people are waking up. The young people are saying absolutely not. So uh, let me get it up here. Yes, got it right here. And then we'll go into who voted. Because I think that's also important. Okay, sounds good. So, mm -hmm. Let me share this. Alexis, I am a nursing and political and lifestyle content creator here on TikTok. Um, and last year, I was one of the TikTokers invited to the State of the Union by the Biden administration. And interesting. Hmm. <laughs> and yet and yet TikTok is supposed to be this horrible tool of the CCP. Oh my gosh. But yet the Biden administration invited TikTok influencers to the State of the Union? <laughs> Got about that. Just you wait to see how many Democrats actually voted for the TikTok ban. I'm think, yeah, I'm curious to see. Yep. Let's continue. And I have a few things I've been wanting to say about it that I've been waiting to. 
not only was I invited to the State of the Union, um, to the State of the Union watch party, after party, the White House uh, banquet room dinner, all of those things. I met the First Lady, I met the President, I met a lot of high-ranking officials within the Biden administration, um, people that came in, that greeted us, that thanked us for being there. And at the time, it felt like a huge honor. After that event, I was added to the email list for the social media team at the White House. Um, I was sent minute by minute updates on certain things, um, updates on what the Biden administration's plans were, things like what they were going to do after Roe fell, after the student loan forgiveness debacle. After October 8th, um, me and any of the content creators that have stood with uh, Gaza and Palestine were immediately taken off the email list. And well, what do you know, game? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Big no, no to support the people who are actually enduring a genocide. So disgusting, man. It's really infuriating. Yep. It's just, uh, yep. man. Let's <sighs> not invited to any events going forward. I learned a lot of lessons being that close to the Biden administration. I learned that one, someone of my moral stature would never survive in the arena of US politics. Um, someone whose word actually matters more to them than money would never survive for a day in that arena. And anyone who has survived in that arena is not to be trusted. People who I had idolized. AO Listen up, guys. Listen up. It gets better from here. Listen up. People who I had idolized, AOC, Bernie, have all <laughs> very quickly let us down in the past uh, five months. My dreams of running for office in this country died immediately. And on October 9th, I said, and I have said since that the Biden administration was preparing to hand this election to Trump over their unwillingness to stop supporting a genocide. They supported a genocide so hard that they were willing to forfeit a second term. It is also not lost on me that if Trump had been in office during this genocide, every single Democrat would have been up in arms and the genocide might not have even happened. We Do you think that's true, game? Um, I mean, they got to play blue team good and red team bad. They got to do whatever they're not doing, you know, so... I mean, that would make the Democrats look good. I think you or Nick pointed this out on one of your shows. Like, if Trump was doing this genocide, AOC would be out there making speeches. Um, other Demo progressives would be too. Like, then, you know, if you're 16 years old, 20 years old, you're not into politics, and you see that, they're like, wow, Republicans are horrible. They're doing a genocide. And then you see, like, these inspiring progressives the, the foul aggressives, you know, speaking up. And it's like, you know, they might have captured and got them sheep herded into the Democratic Party. So I don't know. Um, I mean, both parties are just going to do the same. So, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. I'm kind of in between. I feel like, I feel kind of like, you know, uh, they probably would have just lambasted Republicans for this. But at the same time, it's like they're no better. It's, you know, and, and not to say that it's a good thing that it happened, but the thing is, is that I, I'm, I am, I'm thankful that it happened under, under a democratic, uh, you know, administration so that it shows people that this is who the Democrats really are. They are exactly like the Republicans. There is right. no difference. This is why I say leave the duopoly, leave both parties. And if you wish, if you wish to go third party or independent, okay, do that. 
If not, then if you don't want to do any type of electoral politics, okay, let's get on the ground and let's start organizing. But either way, stay out of the duopoly. And they're showing you who they are. That's all right. Democrats That's are supposed to be the good guys. <laughs> supposed mm -hmm. to be, allegedly, but we all know the truth. Mm -hmm. We might have seen a ceasefire in the second or third week because the Democratic Party would have been mobilized in entirety to stop this from happening. But because it was being perpetrated, funded, and supported and defended by a Democrat, by the head honcho of the Democratic Party, they were all willing to look the other way. And now 20,000 children are dead. And now they want to take away our communication tools to stop us from organizing. But they're going to invite creators from those communication tools to distract us. The gist of everything I am saying is that this is all a game. It is all a game. And truly, the Democrats and the Republicans both want the same goal. Good cop, bad cop are both still cops. Yes. That was based from what you just said. <laughs> um, and so who are the people that voted for this? Well, let's take a look because there was one name that I said, I saw, I was like, say, what are you kidding me right now? That I was just like, I was, I was, I was, I was gobsmacked. I was shocked. So here is the clerk, right? The roll call of who voted for who. So actually, is this too small? Let me, yeah. Okay. So let's scroll down just a little bit. And you have Republican Party, 197 voted yes for this bill. There were 15 Republicans that voted against this bill and then seven that didn't vote. Out of all the Democrats, you had 155 that voted yes for this bill and only 50 voted no. And then seven are not voting. And then one voted present. Then total, you have 352 to 65. Now, let's go over, let's scroll down and see who voted for what, okay? So this is through alphabetical order, right? And I'm just going to go to the names that I know. If there's any names that you want me to stop at, let me know because uh, I can't see you. But just say, hey, JB, stop. I want to talk about that one. So the people who actually did vote that voted for it that I want to focus in on. So let's look at. I think his name he okay so of course lauren bobert voted yes <laughs> of course um this is slightly positive jamal bowman did not vote for it he voted against it right i guess that's something yeah that's something like, he was a red flag as soon as he got in office he was like Praising Obama and just thanking him for his endorsement. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I think this is one of the Castro twins. I forget. I, I think it's Juan Castro. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, but he voted against it. And then... Let me see. Uh, of course, Jim Clyburn voted against it, which is interesting. Interesting. For some yeah. reason, I would thought he he would have voted for it. That guy's cap that guy's captured by Big Pharma. I remember that. Yeah. Him. Of course. 
uh, Dan Crenshaw, he voted for it. You would think he would be a no. I thought he was one of those free speech guys. Mm-hmm. Henry Cuellar, right? He is an anti-abortion Democrat. Of course he voted for it. Wasn't this the guy that Nancy Pelosi campaigned for and advocated for over Jeff- Jessica Cisneros in Texas? Yeesh. Yeah, how did she not beat that guy? Like, he's like a Trump Democrat, you know? Like, Trump likes that guy. Like, how? Yeah. No. Crazy. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Who else? I'm trying to get to people whose name I, I recognize. Let me see. There was somebody who I... So, oh, here's my Congress person, Maxwell Frost. He voted against it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, this was shocking to me. Here's Matt Gates. He voted against it. <laughs> oh my God. Holy crap. Matt Gates? Matt Gates voted against it. I'm thinking, oh, well, he's, you know, going to be all anti-China and vote against it and vote for it. No, he actually voted against it. How is Matt Gates actually going to be more based than some of you Democrats? Are you kidding me right now? It's outflanking him from the left sometimes, him. Outflanking them. It's so sad. You allow Matt Gates? Mm-mm-mm. That guy? I you're gonna let eyebrows outflank you to the left, <laughs> dude. What? He's a corporatist all the way, man. Just, just corporate shill all the way. Just total. I mean, yeah, you have got to be so. Imp- the rest of you Democrats need to hang your head in shame. All y'all that have voted. 150 of y'all need to hang your head in shame. That's a lot, dude. <laughs> that was so Matt many. Damn gates. Mm-mm. Y'all, y'all got me messed up, man. Y'all got me messed all the way up. I'm trying not to cuss. Like, I want to cuss though. I really he, do. He was one of the few calling out arming Nazis in Ukraine too. That's pretty sad. Outflanking on the left on war. It's like, oh my god, Matt Gates. Mm-hmm. He's the voice of reason. Come on, man. Just kill me now. Yeah, he should not be the voice of reason. No, no, no. Um, who else here do we have? Uh of course Steny Hoyer voted yes on it. That dust mite of a politician. Sorry, I I I have no love for these people. Um, Same. Of course, Sheila Jackson Lee, she voted against it. That which is interesting. Jeffries, Jayapal, I guess that's something. Yeah, Je- uh, of course, Hakeem Jeffries voted for it. Scumbag. <laughs> Yes, scumbag, Hakeem Jeffries. He's uh, like a lot of pro-Israel, like one hundred and ten percent, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, let me see here. Ro Khanna voted against it, of course. Raytheon Khanna, or his wife yep. owns stock in Raytheon, or at least. So. Yeah. He has stock. Um, let me see. Who else? Um, trying to see some people who... Uh, Ted Lou. He voted for it. Uh, Ted, Ted, Ted. My goodness. Any progress? Any other progressives in there? Um 
I forget the um, name, but I saw Jayapal. I, I don't know about uh, like. No, we did see Jamal Bowman. Yeah, he voted yes. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna look for. I've already looked at this list be- beforehand, but I just want to share with everybody. Nadler, Jerry Nadler voted nay. I'm actually surprised at that. Uh, and then AOC voted nay as well. They'll flip flop. You know how they um, they'll vote no on some things to look good or yes on things to look good. Yeah, but um, of course Nancy Pelosi voted yay. Ooh, piss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark Pokem voted against it. Ayanna Presley voted against it as well. But they didn't really need to vote for it because, well, you had so many Democrats that were on board. <clears throat> Let me see here. Uh, Adam Schiff voted yes for it. Of course, Shifty Schiff. And yeah, so there's most Democrats. And so people can say, well, you know, the Democrats are, are better than the Republicans. Well, <laughs> you could have surprised me because from the, from the way it looks here, they're not any better. Yeah, that's a ton, dude. Yeah. Tlaib didn't vote. Okay. Yeah. And Tlaib didn't vote. Tlaib. She didn't vote on it. Is she Palestinian or is that Jayapal? I forget. No, Tlaib is Palestinian. She's the Palestinian, not Jayapal. Okay, I get them too. Let's... Yeah. Mm. I think she'd say no because they're bringing the Palestinian genocide plight to light. But I don't know. Yep. And then Richie Torres, he voted for it. Scum. Yeah. Uh, let me see. And of course, Watchman Salts. <laughs> oodles, oodles of noodles ass decided <laughs> to vote yes for it. Oh my God, her hair. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she looked like a, a pack of uh, shrimp-flavored ramen noodles with that pink outfit on. She should be a Republican, dude. She just hates people. She just hates yeah. working-class people so much. Of course. So that's basically who voted for and against it that you know caught my attention. I was just like, oh, my God. So one of the things that I also wanted to talk about was what is the real reason why they – wanted this to be uh what's the real reason why so i'm going to share this commentary from jonathan greenblatt and then there was also some leaked audio that came out i had the leaked audio separate but they also included it in this clip so thankfully i'm just going to keep playing this clip but jonathan greenblatt basically let the cat out of the bag because everybody's talking about, oh, my God, China, China, China. I'm going to tell you something right now. The banning of TikTok is not actually about China. Surprise as it might be, it's not about China. It may have been in the past. But all that changed after October 7th. Let's take a look. Woo! speak frank about it we've been on this show we've talked about instagram we've talked about twitter or x and you've seen my back and forth with elon musk but we need to talk about tiktok tiktok if yes. you will oh. it is the is the 24 7 news channel of so many of our young people and it's like al jazeera on steroids i'm i'm getting the impression that he doesn't like al jazeera game mm, yeah i don't know what makes you think that? Yeah, I, don't I don't think he likes it. Anti defamation league, okay. And intensifying the anti Semitism and the anti Zion with no repercussions. I've got to ask, Joe, like, there's been a lot of lamentations about the fact that TikTok's ownership is Chinese, but you know what? 
Oracle owns 10% of the company. General Atlantic owns a piece of the company. Um, our friends at Sequoia Capital own a piece of the company. So does Sequoia and General Atlantic, does Oracle want to be responsible for spreading anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism? Here is the call coming out to these companies to drop TikTok so that it does not have these people owning it anymore. And then on top of that, mind you, TikTok is owned 60% by U.S. companies. So ultimately, TikTok's not owned by China. TikTok is owned by multiple investors. Interesting. It's time to talk about TikTok. And I think we yes. need members of Congress to be asking them, why aren't they doing enough? And let me be clear, I've met with Sho Chu, the CEO. I've talked to their leadership, but it is long past time for TikTok and its owners and its investors to step up and say, enough, we're gonna take action. Yeah. Frank, Frank Ford, do you have teenage kids? I do. So, you so he wants them to basically ban a site because it is popular among young people because a lot of what we have learned is about the actual objective history of Zionism has really shown all the young people that settler colonialism is legitimately a bad thing. It also shows that yes, over 30,000 people so far have been murdered, killed, genocided by the state of Israel. He's saying that, oh, it's anti-Semitism. When in reality, being anti-Zionist is not anti-Semitic. Yeah, that's his argument. Like, that's all he's got. It's, uh, it's anti-Semitic. That's just like, come on, man. That's all you got. Like, that's just, that's just, can't, that excuse has been worn out. First five or six months later, it's 30 plus thousand murdered. It's like, come on. Yeah. And, um, and, and truth be told, if Palestinians are Semites and you kill 30,000 civilians, isn't that anti-Semitism? An Arab is a Semite, right? Yes. So if you murdered 30,000 of them, you literally just committed a Holocaust. And don't tell me, oh, well, that's only for the murder of Jews that you can use Holocaust. No, actually go look in the dictionary definition of what a Holocaust is. I know I tried to talk to a liberal. I'm like, hey, don't you, because she was being pro-Israel in November-ish. And I told her, well, don't you know Israel has been keeping Palestinians in an open-air concentration camp? And I say concentration camp because open-air prison, they didn't do anything wrong. So I like to say concentration camp. But she deflected mm -hmm. and like, oh, well, you're offending uh, Israelis. You can't say concentration camp. And like, yes, you can. like can't you, you should be more concerned about pre-October 7th. You're deflecting what's some word choice I use. But anyways, it's like, God, you can definitely say concentration. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because that's exactly what it is. I mean, the United States did it. Concentration camps were actually based on how the United States actually treated the indigenous people in this land. That's what it's based on. So <clears throat> let's continue because he has more to say. Oh boy. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like it is amazing what our our children, what their friends, what younger people are getting, the unfiltered anti-Semitic bile. Anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. And standing against the genocide is actually being on the right side of history. And standing against settler colonialism is being on the right side of the people. And so here's what you're hearing from somebody like Joe Scarborough, who is basically defending empire and defending the atrocities that the state of Israel is committing because he doesn't like that kids are actually learning the truth. 
Mind you, the younger generation has always been based. How old was, was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he first got famous and doing all the things that he did? He was in his late 20s, early 30s. He died at 39. I'm 39. Guess what? It wasn't the old people that were changing things. It was the young people. And yet, now the young people are actually learning what's really going on. Oh, you want to be, no, no, they're, they're, they're doing actually things against cellular colonialism. He's got a punchable face, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> no violence on the channel, though, you know, I'm just hypothetically speaking, you know. <laughs> yeah, he, he contemptible. Did they get thing every day? Off of TikTok. And again, I didn't understand what was going on college campuses, why it was happening. Yeah. If you don't understand what's going on in college campuses, don't look at the University of Penn, right? Look at TikTok. I mean, doesn't That's so much, where this is. It makes me despair for the world that they're going to inhabit. Just the low quality of the informational ecosystem in which they exist, where uh, demagoguery, misinformation circulates like oxygen. And it also makes me despair for the ways in which they debate one, one another, that they're yes. just incapable of expressing disagreement without resorting to hyperbole. And also right. the way in which everybody is forced to take sides about an issue which, which most people have exceedingly low knowledge, which is why. Hang on, hang on. How many times have I seen on TikTok, where articles are shown, where you have had primary sources being shown via green screen on TikTok of the actual facts that have been happening on the ground. And this dude wants to say, well, unreliable resources, when in fact, they actually go to reliable resources to show what's going on. It's not just people saying, you know, things off the top of their head. They're literally showing receipts. Tell me you haven't been on TikTok without telling you you haven't been on TikTok. Yeah, because now like Times of Israel and like even like Israeli news, you can go to Harrods or um, legit. Even like they're starting to leak stuff out and they're quoting that stuff. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my gosh, this guy why you get so extraordinarily ignorant on this issue and i'm not i'm not i don't say that about a lot of issues but on the middle east yeah. you know people who have no idea what's been going on since 1948 yeah will look at a 30 second clip and, and then they'll become and experts and determined. march across the college yeah. campus they'll take over the building oh, based on Lord. tiktok right. shut up joe scarborough Here's the thing. Number one, it is not just in 30 second clips that these kids have actually learned stuff. They're actually finding out and then going and researching themselves about what has actually happened over the last 75 years. And in fact, they've been le learning but pre before that. When Lord Balfour decided to create the Zionist Project with Theodore Herzl, they're actually learning this. They're learning that it's been facilitated by, oh my God, what's his name? Uh, the Rothschilds has been facilitated by them. They're learning all this stuff. They literally got a crash course in Zionism and how it started since October 7th. And they're realizing that because of the, the UN, and because of them signing the paper, you suddenly get the ability to go to another land that's already occupied and kick the people who are occupying it out? Ask these young people how they feel about what the, about what England did, about a lot of what these European countries did to the indigenous on this land. Do they feel that's wrong? Yes. Are they going to feel the same way about what's going on in Palestine? Uh-huh. So, guess what? We keep that same energy for what the United States, what England, Portugal, Spain, and France did. We keep that same energy 
to what's going on in Palestine. Stop insulting our intelligence because we're younger. Because guess what? We actually know a lot more than what you think. See, this is what gets me mad, especially about some people of the old, older generation, is that they will make, they will look at younger people and make them seem like, oh my God, they're so young, they're so dumb, they're so impressionable. They're trying to, those of you who are Gen Z, they're saying you're stupid. Yeah, I really hate it how they um, say, what are you, an expert? You're not an expert. Like, you don't have to, like, I think you said it on your last show or two shows ago, like, mm -hmm. uh, only one Israeli kid has been killed since October 7th. And what have we got 70% is women and children, 20,000 uh, children killed. You don't need to be an expert um to know that and it's like even if like those totals are like like they always say the gaza health ministry is oh it's all hamas like those numbers are not real well okay let's just say like half of those is real it's like where do you draw the line and where when it's a genocide or when it's right or wrong you know so it's like yeah, yeah these guys are insulting um our intelligence for sure yeah i agree especially the young people especially gen z they're insulting gen z's intelligence Building oh based on Lord. TikTok. Right. Yeah, TikTok. <laughs> So there, somebody like him is going to say, well, this is propaganda from Hamas. It is not propaganda from them at all. When in reality, what has actually been shown <clears throat> is, I'll put it to you this way. We have been studying the history. I shared with you guys the other day uh, the I showed with you guys this site called CountingTheKids.org, right? And I'll share it again, just for reference, right? Because we have been seeing all the children that have been massacred, all the Palestinian kids, just the kids alone. This isn't their moms, their dads, their grandparents, their aunties, their uncles, their teachers. This is just, here's 2023-2024. This is, for all intents and purposes, this is why we are now standing with Palestine. Because this is unwarranted. This is evil. This is why everybody is saying ceasefire now in the occupation and also in the apartheid. And somehow, some way that is to them, it is oppressive to Israelis. It's not oppressive to Israelis. When When you 
when you are accustomed to privilege, equality feels like oppression. When you're saying you want the Palestinians to be equal to the Israelis, to them, it's like, no, you can't do that to us. What's wrong? I thought you guys were about all about democracy. Yeah. Oh, oh <clears throat> sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, just like you can't give Palestinians an inch, man. Like, um, I don't know. Right, right Brain TV did a great. They had like eight little mini videos of like what Israelis think of like Palestinians and just mm -hmm. how they're brainwashed from like young ages, man, just to like hate them. And uh, yeah, it's okay to carpet bomb them, man. You know, it's like. They have to go and just like you you want to show some um solidarity with them you're right it's like <gasps> no like mm -hmm. blasphemy you can't do that but yeah just, yep um so and let me share this as well i i got some stuff man it, it's it, it's really showing why it is so important uh, shout out to Chuck Modiano for this as well. One second. Has also been a huge radicalizing force towards the Palestinian cause, and that that is a risk to our government. That is a risk to the Israeli apartheid and genocide of the Palestinian people. The more educated our people are, the more involved they will be, the more activated they will be. They will continue fighting. They will continue Thank you. Ask that question. Why? Why are they justified? Why? Why isn't that? You know, um, other. Why isn't it that Palestinians can't defend themselves? Because they have been trying, and. Every single time Palestinians have tried to do what they can, you know, it, it's just, it's been met with genocide. Like, for instance, you know, the right to return. They were, you know, shot at. Just, just peacefully going to the gate, trying to return to their homes by the IOF. Let me share this as well. Uh, this is from Robert Durden. Shout out to him. He's part of the Indie News Network. He says, anyone telling you the TikTok ban is about China is either ignorant or lying. The truth is that Zionists and their BS has bar are getting exposed by young people on TikTok to the tune of millions of views. It therefore must be censored. This bill is being pushed to protect Zionism. Let's share this. 
U.S. views on top opinionated Israel Hamas TikTok hashtags. Number of views in seven days to December 22nd. So this is from last year. Free Palestine got 82.6 million. Look at I stand with Israel. <laughs> See, numbers Israel is only at 2 million. Oh 2 million. God. Everything is free Palestine, free Gaza, free Palestine with the flag, free Palestine TikTok, save Gaza, stand with Palestine, I stand with Palestine, from the river to the sea, save Palestine, in the occupation, pray for Palestine, Palestine will be free. And then you got stand, I stand with Israel. Not a good look. <laughs> that does not look. In the words of another Zionist, Donald Trump, uh, it's not good. It's not good. Not good at all. <laughs> it's not. Not for them. Not for Zionists. Which, by the way, Donald Trump is also a Zionist, just as much as a Zionist as Joe Biden is. I can't even play everything that I want to play because if I played everything that I want to play, and Here's the thing. They gave, they gave the game away. Let me share this with y'all, too. They, they, they gave the game away. Take a look here. Look, this is Jewish Federations of North America. We want Congress to tell TikTok that their time is up. We're done with the lies platform spreads about the Jewish people in Israel. Take action now. Hang on. How many people are actually talking against Zionism on Twitter? I don't see them saying anything about Twitter. But because yeah, it's why popular, is that? Yeah. Like, Instagram, okay. Twitter, you know. Then I guess you guys want to go against Twitter? I guess you guys what about what about what about YouTube? They're not saying anything about us. <clears throat> so let me also share this. And this homegirl, oh my God. You know what? Oh, there's so much. There's so much. And of course, you know, there's a lot. I'm just going to share a little bit of this before I get to this one like, last clip because I don't want this this to go too too far uh just too long this this segment has already went long enough so this gentleman says this in my last video i showed that the zionists are trying to buy tiktok but has anyone looked at who brought the bill in the first place and who pays him because i just did here check this out this is the bill right here representative mike gallagher that would be this charming devil right here and if we look at his top contributors for this election cycle, Palantir and Google are at the top with $44,000 and $40,000. But right there, that's APAC with $17,000. But wait, there's more. We're going to switch this to the last election cycle in 2022 and scroll down. And would you look at that? His top contributor that got him elected in 2022 was APAC with $44,000 contribution. If you didn't know, that's the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee, the Zionist lobby group that doesn't need to register as a foreign agent because they refuse to. So just to clarify, the TikTok ban bill was introduced by a guy whose some of his top contributions are coming from the Zionists. So that tells you everything you need to know about what's going on with this guy. Surprise, surprise. APAC. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just going to share this final video before we move on because I think it's important to realize there, there's a lot more content that I could have brought out, but I just, I don't have the time to bring it all out. But I have way more content than what I needed, but I'm going to share this last thing with you guys because this is important. Uh, and let me see. Is this the one? Yeah. 
Okay. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go pee real quick. I'll be right back. Whoop. Okay. So let's share this. And we'll get to this right here. Let's talk about the TikTok fan. I'm going to say something controversial and your cognitive dissonance will deactivate your critical thinking the moment that you feel triggered. I'm not trying to offend you, but if you find yourself upset, self-reflect. I saw something from Cat Williams talking about a liar knows the lie that they told. If they hide something on their left, they're going to keep looking at their left, even if they told you that it was on the right. And then he went on to say, black people have forgotten their identity. White people have not forgotten black people's identity. This is why we're always under TikTok. Why is TikTok always putting videos on it? People talking about because we're realizing we're in an oppressive regime and we're fighting back against our government because we hate them and we support Palestine. That's the tip of the fucking iceberg. I've been talking about banning TikTok, but this time they're not bluffing, and I wanted to know what was different. And I think it's because we did something that actually worked this time. Think about Starbucks, think about Kellogg, think about the fact that there's a list going around for how many other companies we plan on hitting instead of trying to eat the starve the rich. Y'all have to remember, our government is like NASCAR. Congress, your representatives, your senators, the people that you think are working for you, they are bought and they're paid for. They're like the drivers and the cars. They have one to two major sponsors and then 50 to 100 mini tiny sponsors. It's the fact that you're pissed off with your government. It's the fact that you're pissed off and doing something. They are so used to us being kinked out on our comfort. Most of us are sluts for leisure. You like your AC, you like your internet access, you like social media, and they know this. So they know most people will not ride at dawn. But we started figuring out ways to put dents in the system, pulling your money from Starbucks, from Kellogg. It does, in fact, do something because they have politicians on payroll. So now they're applying pressure to the politicians and the politicians are applying pressure to this motherfucking bill. <laughs> I told you earlier that your government is like NASCAR. So those 500 stickers that are on there are not just large companies or sponsors that you would recognize like Kellogg and Starbucks and oil companies or even these companies that are buying up all the single family homes, even though all of this is fucking connected and planned. No, some of small private organizations that you've never heard, but they're funded by people that you know and you go well what the fuck are they doing in this y'all sometimes forget places <clears throat> Hollywood. they're also government entities this is literally their partner in propaganda who else is going to be pushing their motives and agendas y'all have to start looking a little bit deeper everything is about a fucking trail tiktok shop came through and it started platforming businesses overnight these same people get platformed overnight, have the ability to replace the people that we are destabilizing. And y'all are not putting two and two together. We are starting to form a community for real outside of our government. And they see this and it scares them because how else are they going to keep their lights on and sell their homes? <laughs> so basically, it's democratizing the internet and they don't want that. And they do not want us realizing the truth about what they're doing and how empire works, ultimately. Any final thoughts uh, about this issue uh, regarding the banning of TikTok? And also, if anybody hasn't already, please make sure to take the poll because, oh, and I, I have one more question for you as well before, before we end it. Do you think that this bill will make it to the Senate and get passed? I don't know, man. It's uh, it's pretty scary. I mean, um, I'm not. That would be. I feel like it's too shocking. That's just too being too oppressive. It feels like. Like, do they really have the balls? And I mean, I guess they do, right? But it's scary, man. I I'm fifty fifty. I mean, I don't think so. Like, mm -hmm. mm. but um, man, like you and I are about the same age. Like, in 2000s when 9-11 and Iraq war happened like we didn't have TikTok and like I wasn't aware of what was really going on how did you feel around that time just to connect it to like staying informed and like um, learning about what's going on uh, it was just something I thought about I don't know yeah so when it comes to you know what happened in 2000 especially um, when it comes to uh, the 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 piece of you know that we we were taught was oh this is about terrorism and things like that. One of the things I think that is important for us to realize is that 
we were lied to because we're always taught that America is this, you know, you know, benevolent country that's just trying to help the world and things like that. And one of the things that I learned was that both sides of the aisle, which they're they're both on the same side. One of the things I learned is that they are all trying to, uh, they have a facade of, oh, well, we're on this side and we're on this side, but ultimately we're just trying to do better for America, right? When in reality, it's not that way. It is, they are united with each other for empire. I want people to remember this, especially when it comes to this bill that just passed. It was bipartisan. Always remember when both parties come together, that means they're coming together to screw you. It's never, it's never to actually help people. If it was actually to help people, it wouldn't really get much support because of who they're owned by. And so, you know, from what I was taught was that, you know, uh, everything that the United States does is a net positive and we have to trust our agencies and what they're doing because ultimately, you know, it's for the good of the world. When in reality, <laughs> it hasn't been that way. It's been for the good of corporations and for the ultra wealthy, but it hasn't been good for us. And I think if you put the actual power within our hands, then that's when we'll actually do good for us. But it will also in turn shake hands with doing good for the rest of the world. Because we're not going to screw over the world just to benefit ourselves because we see ourselves in the rest of the world. A friend who says, uh, qui bono, who benefits, right? Like who's, who's benefiting from this uh, yeah. bill here? And corporations are taking a hit with the boycotting so money money talks right so yep absolutely so i'm going to share this um this poll that we took so that you guys can take a look at it um this poll is pretty revealing so if you guys haven't taken the poll take it right now because i'm about to i'm about to reveal it so let me share here Now, out of 85 votes, it says, do you think the House bill banning TikTok will pass in the Senate? Yes, is 44%. No, it's 16%. And not sure is 40%. So about 40% are in line with you. They just do not know how it's going to go. Um, I, I honestly think that, I think that it will pass the Senate. So what happens what? next? Um, like voting in the Senate and Congress, how many congressmen and who votes on what is so confusing, like parliamentarian. And it, um, so it's like it gets to the Senate. And then now what happens? Like how many people need to vote? And like, well, I'm not an expert on that one. I mean, uh, ultimately, they really just for a simple majority they need 50 plus one. Um being as right wing as Joe Biden is, I can actually see him signing this into law, meaning so that if it was 50 people, then he could tell Vice President Harris to break the tie vote because she is literally the president of the Senate. Mm, so okay. I can see it. I can see it happening. But this is also going to be political suicide for Joe Biden. Man. They're just handing the keys to Trump, man. Yeah, yeah. Because, and, and and make no mistake, Trump would do this too. Because he's all anti-China, you know. He doesn't like China either. And so he will do whatever he can to lambast China and support Israel as much as he possibly can because he's a Zionist too. Agreed. But that's basically, you know, how I feel. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, 
you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jvfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.